All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for our second lecture series from Abdallah Risk about ancient history of Syria. And uh, today topics will be kings and leaders of uh, this region. Uh, this lecture will reveal you uh, unknown facts about rulers uh, of, uh, of Syria and the people who made the impactful difference and left a significant mark in history. So please welcome uh, for our second lecture, Abdallah Risk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sergei, and thank you for all the team of uh, uh, Academy uh, Rudmino for giving me the chance to be with you and share uh, some of the knowledge uh, that I have. And uh, I know some of the issue that I would say uh, some people will not like it. Uh, some will feel like it is uh, new. Uh, knowledge, shocking knowledge. Uh, it might contradict some of the uh, knowledge uh, you have, uh, but uh, the real aim and target of those uh, lectures uh, is to ignite uh, inside each of you the will of knowledge, the, the hunger for questioning uh, What's, what happened, what is what we know, is really what happened, truly what happened, or there is another side of the story. Uh, we are going to talk about the... Okay, so... As we start in the last uh, like lecture, uh, those are some of the pictures I took myself, uh, except one which is the Umayyad uh, Mosque uh, in the center of uh, Syria, which is this one. This is the central mosque. The rest are taken by, my, by myself. And into those two pictures, you can see my family uh, there, so the picture I made uh, myself. And into our last lecture, let me just change. Okay. So uh, we we are talking about the natural Syria or the Great Syria, the one country which was bordered with the natural borders. On the east, we are talking about the mountain Zagros, which is now in Iran. At the north, we are talking about the, the, the mountain Toros, which are today in Turkey. In fact, the borders with Turkey is much uh, south than the, uh, the mountain uh, Toros. So all the findings of the ancient, uh, as they call it, Mesopotamia, or the Levant, or we like to call it the great Syria or the natural Syria. They are inside this area uh, where the, the, the rivers, the main two rivers, uh, the Euphrat and the Tigris, crossing uh, through the land and uh, fertilizing the land to uh, make it really uh, some place to, to live. The interest of this uh, region how, was like uh, uh, started because of the Bible, especially the Old Testament, uh, where the people, they took the, the Bible uh, story as the, the, the facts, as the only facts about the region and start looking for the evidence of the, the, the biblical story. But more they did archeological research and excavations, the further they became away from the biblical story and they discovered that the facts on the ground many times is contradict what we have. Uh, but today we will be talking about the kings who ruled that 
uh, part of the world. And not only the kings, uh, we'll be talking about uh, leaders, famous uh, people, some people, their words, we still use some, some words, they become uh, like legends, they become like holy uh, words. So uh, I would like to start with the message we have it from the Lord Baal. So uh, because it includes the letter Ain, so we have to use the apostle in the name. So we put the Baal. So the Lord Baal, who is the, the God of the of the sky, the rain, the fertilization, everything is one of the main gods in the region. He left like a message for the people of Syria. The message says, like smash your sword or break your sword and grab your pickaxe and follow me to plant peace and love in the heart of the earth. You are Syrian and Syria the center of the earth. In the original text, they use the word of the universe, uh, but sometimes uh, because the word uh, earth, some of you will not know that this is the diversion of the old Aramic word Arao become earth from the word Arao, which means the land. Uh, and we will be talking more about those kind of words, how it, uh, the source or the, the origin of the words and how it diverted from the uh, Aramic, the Assyrian language, the main language of the land and spread around uh, the world. Many people, they, still, they use many of the words that they never thought about the meaning or the origin of the, those words. And one of them, as I, I believe I explained now, the word earth, it comes from the word Arao, which is Ara, which is the land in the Aramic uh, language. And I'm using the, the, the proper pronunciation because I know some of the letters, the foreigners, they cannot pronounce it. So the letter Ain, uh, which is the first letter in my name, because my name in, in, in Arabic is Abdullah, it's not Abdullah. But we will come to this into one of our uh, coming um, lectures. When someone talks about Syria, uh, they only remember the Roman uh, colonization of the area where the Romans divided Syria into two districts, two, two main districts, uh, the, the hollow Syria, as they call it, and the other Syria, but this is not the whole story. And uh, the story really begins not in 60 years BC, the story begins much, much far in, in the past. We are talking something like 3,000 years BC, 5,000 years ago. And uh, those discoveries, uh, like the list of the kings, uh, mainly they were found into the uh, Ashur Banibal uh, library. Uh, we're coming for this one, and uh, we will talk more about the findings uh, in our next uh, lecture when we'll be talking about the, the myth and the legends and the tales of the area. And this lecture is going to take place on the 19th uh, of uh, February. So, the list of the kings was found into many versions. Uh, more than 90% they were identical. Uh, some of the names were like add to the list. Some they were changed. Some they had like a dialect recording, but the, the list of the kings start with some kings that we do not know. We don't have any proofs that those kings did exist. Like the first king, Alulim, who said that he descended from the heaven and the world heaven in the sky, who descended. And the god Inki gave him the power to rule over the earth. And he ruled for 88,800 88, years. Uh, they used the uh, Sumerian or the Sumerian uh, uh, mathematics and the numerical uh, units. And uh, in the list of the kings, they put the amount of the years this king ruled. So 
so we could see i mean some numbers like uh, i don't know <laughs> sky numbers uh, king ruling for 28000 years the other the second king alanangar he ruled for 36000 years uh, then for 30 43000 years in the total of the ruling of those kings it's more than for uh, 200000 years and it is prior of the flood to sweep almost uh, everything. And in fact, the, the story of the flood is one of the stories found uh, at the library of the King Ashur Banibar. And it predates really in 2000 years, the story of the Bible. Uh, uh, and th there are, uh, we will come into to, to this uh, legend in our next uh, coming uh, lecture. So the first kings on the uh, list of the kings, so far, we did not find any proofs on the ground, archaeologically, we cannot prove that they did exist or the time they ruled or who they were, but because in the list we have uh, some of the kings which was proved in archaeological way and uh, mythological findings that they did exist. So we have to look into this uh, list of the kings as uh, enough source of information. It may not be the whole uh, knowledge or the, the whole truth, but there is high potential that those things really did exist. And I would like to start with the first uh, king. His name is Itana. So the king Itana is the 13th king on the list of the kings of uh, of Kish or the, the, Sum the Sumerian or Sumerian uh, king. And it's believed that he ruled something like the 29th century BC. Uh, still, we do not find, we did not find any real proofs of his existence or like uh, a still or a finding about him. But there is like a story, a legend about him. Itana, he was called the shepherd and it said that he ascended to heaven and asked the god to give him the the power to rule and he came back and and, and he ruled so this legend does exist on one of the cylindric uh, stamps uh, and this legend uh, does exist and it mentioned him by the name so that's why we come to know about uh, this uh, king. Still, we did not find his palace or any other uh, thing related to him except this one. Uh, and when we talk about him descending to the heaven, uh, it looks like we are talking about real human and mythological person. So during that period, there were this kind of mix between the, the gods, the deities, and the, the human. And uh, another very clear uh, example is the King Aginor. The King Aginor, who was the king of Tyr, which is today in Lebanon. And uh, it was said that he is the son of Poseidon, and Libya. And there were like two brothers, Aginor and uh, Belos. They were twins. Belos remained in Egypt to rule Egypt. Aginor, he came to Phoenicia, which is the uh, eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Palestine, or Israel, to rule over there. And why I choose uh, Aginor, because Aginor, he had like four kids. Some they said five kids. One of the kids was Europe. And there is a legend about Europe, how Zeus kidnapped her and uh, 
gave her her name to the continent uh, Europe, but we will come to this story into the, the next. Even in this uh, king, Aginor, we see like the god Poseidon married or had relation with Libya and like uh, a human deity went come to existence and he become the the king so uh during that period 2000 years 3000 years bc they were kind of mixed they were always trying to give the kings like uh mythical uh power or uh, roots so itana the king of uh, Sumer, though we found uh, like uh, a story about him, but yet we did not find uh, something proof. Until we get to the king in Mebergasi. The king in Mebergasi, he is a very uh, special or like a turn point into the history because he is the first king we have physical existence of his existence <laughs> and the name of uh, N. Mebergasi uh, was found on one of the jars uh, and it was lived in the city Nepur, uh, in the in the temple of the god uh, Enlil, in the city uh, Aga, which become uh, Agada uh, later on. So, and uh, his his name, he he was the father of Aga, the king Aga, who was very well known. Uh, at the Epic of Gilgamesh. And we're gonna be talking about the Epic of Gilgamesh into our next uh, lecture. So I would like here to take a time, take a minute to look into the name of this king and Mebergasi. The, the first two letters, E-N, N. This is like the, the owner, like we say, sir, you're honest, you know, something like honorable and the name me one of the scholars he read it as the man of the crown bara bara is like the ruler so of course and see it it, it means the uh, the, the, the feeling of the position. So the name of in Mebergasi, it means like the honorable person who rules the, who, who feels the, the, the kingdom or the, 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 the royal crown. And uh, all the names, all the words in the old language, the, uh, the, the, the Aramic language and the Assyrian, the Aramic Assyrian language, they, they have a meanings. There is no word without meanings. You, you will never find something like blah, 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 blah. No, it does not exist. So all the name uh, needs to be translated and need to be studied to understand what we are talking. So this king in Mebergasi, his name, the crown fit for a ruler, or the, the priest who permitted the throne. So he was the first king that we have proofs that he did exist in the uh, city of, of Kish or the, in the uh, Sumerian uh, region, which is uh, south of what today is Iraq. After in Mebergasi, we have the famous king, king Gilgamesh. And uh, Gilgamesh, He was a king of the city-state uh, Uruk. Uh, and his name was very related to the epic. 
he was very famous uh, king, strong king, uh, looking for knowledge. Uh, he was looking for the eternity. And that was the, the epic of Gilgamesh. That's the, the trip of eternity. When, when he ruled the whole earth, as they call it, and he tried to be an eternal person. And he started his trip for eternity. And we will come to the uh, epic of, of Gilgamesh into our next uh, lecture. But the epic of Gilgamesh itself, it predates the, the Homeros writing of the Iliad and the Odessa for like 1500 years. And when did the people or the scholars, they come and say, oh, you know, the, the Iliad and the Odessa, they are the first like epics, the first stories in, in, on, on earth. We said, no, we have some writings predate uh, that one. Uh, we will be talking more about uh, the uh, Gilgamesh into our nest. I'm, I'm just jumping here between the, 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 the times because the, the period is, is too big. <clears throat> I'm trying to cover like 3000 years of history into one hour. So I do apologize if I'm jumping or uh, going uh, fast. <clears throat> we come to a very special person on the list of the kings is the queen Kubaba. And her name in the Sumerian is Kubawa, Kubawa. And she was famous, in fact, on the list of the kings, she was mentioned as the Ali wife, which means she was cooking the, the, the beer. And uh, for funny, till now, the glass we drink in our language, we say Kubai. Very, very close to the name Kubawa. It, it might be something like uh, to consider, but we might be talking about uh, this into the, the, the next uh, lecture, the one after when we'll be talking about the origin of the, of the names. But why Kubaba or Kubawa was famous? Because we are talking 2,500 years BC. And during that period, everybody thinks that the women were not allowed to rule. But we have proof that it's not the truth the region had queen and into the list of the kings on the cylinders of the list of the kings, she was uh, like identified as a separate dynasty, a total dynasty allocated for her. The story of Kiwawa, like she, when her husband uh, died, she got the power or she used to rule and uh, she, she was uh, like uh, acknowledged as a goddess and the, the belief in the goddess uh, Kubaba uh, remained even like a thousand years after she passed away. In fact, we have like a Phoenician seal showing uh, her as the, like the, the protector of the houses. And the name Kubaba uh, was diverted into the, the other languages was uh, appeared in, 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 in the area, like was the Hurian. Uh, she was mixed with the Hurian mother, Hanana. And up to today, we call the mother in our language, Hanuna. So it's very similar, very. It, it, it must have the same uh, roots. When we say the Hanana or the Hanuna, it's from the same uh, rules. And the, the Lydian name of the, uh, the queen, uh, Kubaba, was Kuvav, and when the name went to Greeks, it would become Kebebe. And she was Hellenized <laughs> after a while, 
and she would become Kebebe, the daughter of Zeus. And in all her uh, <clears throat> scripts and uh, <clears throat> what do you call it, the, 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 not, not still the, the, the scripts and the monuments we found for her, she was always holding like a circle jar, special jar that people believe that it might be a pomegranate or it might be like a cup she used to give uh, the people uh, from it. Uh, and there is very funny story about that. Like the, the people, they went to a region under the, uh, the god Marduk and uh, protected by the god Marduk and they were fishing. So they were cut and brought in front of Kubaba. And when she asked them what you are doing here, they said like, oh, we were hungry. So she said, oh, if you are hungry, you can stay. And they stayed at her house for like seven or eight days until the god Marduk decided like to release him, not to kill them. And uh, they were released uh, after that. And they said like, it's her who talked to god Marduk by keeping them in her house. So he decided not to kill them. And so that's why those people, when they went outside of their area, they were talking about how she convinced the gods not to punish them. So she become the god protector and the people, they start keeping her name in her memory. And they believe that if we are under the protection of Kubaba, the gods will not uh, kill us because she will have a kind of special mercy for us. And uh, this kind of feelings the Hanan in, in our language is the feeling of the mother for the sons. So it's, it's different from the feeling of the father for the sons because it's like little bit uh, special feelings that the mothers always have. So Kubaba is the first queen and the only queen in the list of the uh, Sumerian uh, kings. She, uh, her son, uh, he ruled uh, over the uh, the area, and her grandson, his name is Ur uh, Zababa. Ur Zababa is the king who fights against Sargon, and we will come to that uh, region. So we are like more or less into sequence. We move to other uh, another king, the king Orkagina. King Orkagina, like 2,320 years BC, uh, he was the king of, of Lagash in uh, Gersu, as a like two cities, because you know, th those period, those times, every city was considered as a kingdom and every kingdom was trying to expand its, its territory just to get more money into the central, uh, like Kazna, so they can do more uh, buildings. Orkagina is recognized as the first reformer in the history because he combat the corruptions. He prohibited the rich people and the priests of the, the temples to abuse the people. The first time in history, the word freedom, amagi, in the old language, was appeared in the writings as in the recorded history that he gave the freedom for the people in his territory. He exempts the, the widows and the orphans from the taxes. In fact, he compelled the city to pay for the funerals. So when someone dies, you know, every, I mean, uh, it, maybe it's not the same uh, here, uh, but in, in the Middle East, when someone dies, they uh, make like special celebration. They share foods. Uh, they build like tents. They used to build tents. Uh, now they go to, to church or to mosque or whatever. It, it costs a lot of money. The Orkagina, he, 
like forced the, the city to pay for all the expenses of the funerals and forced the, the rich people like to, to pay if they want to purchase. So they cannot come and say, oh, I am the powerful guy. You have to give me your land. It's not that anymore. So he was the first uh, reformer in the history. And uh, because of that, they did not like, they did not like him. They did not like because the, the rich people, they always try to abuse the power. They try to abuse the, the what do you call them? The, the, the weak people, like a widow with some kids, they try to take advantage of, of them. So with the, with the ruling of Orkagina, they could complain. And those rich people, even if they are priests, they were punished, nobody. So those priests and rich people, they helped other king, and that king is uh, Lugal Zagi, uh, to, to attack the city. And the king Orkagina, he was like overthrown and uh, he was killed uh, because of that. We arrived to one very famous king, the King Sargon or Sargon of Akkad or the great uh, Sargon, Sargon the Great, who ruled, in fact, he, he is the one who established the Akkadian Empire in 2330 BC. And he is the first recorded person in history to rule over an empire. Uh, here I would like to mention very special issue, the story of the birth of Sargon. And uh, if uh, you have, uh, what do you call it, uh, biblical uh, like knowledge, the Old Testament knowledge, you would feel the similarity between the story of Sargon, which is proved in findings and other story which is mentioned in the Old Testament. Sargon, he was an illegal son of a priestess in the temple of the god Ainana. And because the, the priest, the priestess or the nun, as we call him now, were not allowed to have kids. They were not allowed to have relation with men. They need to be like pure to serve the gods. So she couldn't keep the child. She couldn't reveal her pregnancy. So when she gave a birth, she put him in a basket and pushed the basket on the river Ephrates. And that basket reached like a city and someone named Aki, who was the gardener of the king Urzababa, the, grand, the grandson of the queen uh, Kubaba. Uh, the, the, the gardener took him and he raised him as his son, as his own son. And when the king uh, saw that this Sargon, in fact, we don't know his real name because the name Sargon, it's different. We'll come to it in, 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 in a minute. Uh, he found him like reliable. So he was, or he become, we call him the cup holder, like the, the secretary. The, 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 the closest person to the, to the king, he become to the cup holder of the king Urzababa. Uh, very trustable person. So uh, the, the story of the king uh, Sargon was found into one of the like uh, clay uh, tablets where he, it's, it's written like my mother was a, a challenging my father and I knew not. 
the brother of my father loved the hills. My home was in the highlands where the herbs grow. My mother conceived me in secret. She gave a birth to me in concealment. She sent, she set me in a basket of rush. She sealed it, lead with tar. She cast me into the river, but I did not raise over me. The water carried me to Aki, the drawer of water. He lifted me out as he dipped his jar into the river. He took me as his son. He raised me. He made me his gardener. So this, the story on the, on like Sargon himself, he was telling this and this story was fixed. And it's very similar to a very famous person in the, in the Old Testament. So we know that the story of the Old Testament was taken from this story. It's not the, the real story. This is the real story, the King uh, Sargon. So uh, the, the King Uzbaba, when he knew that the King uh, Lugal Zagi from Kish, he was attacking uh, the cities and taking over the cities after he killed uh, Orkagina. Ur Zababa, he was like afraid and he decided to get rid of Sargon. So he wrote, wrote a letter and he said, Sargon, I'm sending you to meet the, the king uh, Lugal Zagi. Tell him that we surrender. I don't want him to get into my city and destroy it. I will be his assistant under his rule. But in the letter, it was mentioned like King Lugal Zagi, I acknowledge you as a king, please kill this person holder of this letter. So Lugal Zagi was very smart and he felt like even the king of the city, the Urza Baba, he is afraid from Sargon. He decided to use him, he did not kill him. And he sent him to the city to took over the city. But Sargon, he was very smart, very ambitious. He's not only took over the city. And he took over the city. He established a system in the city. Then he attacked Lugal Zagi and he took him. They, they put a chain in his neck and he pulled him into the city of Nippur, where the, the temple of the god Enlil was there because the god Enlil was his like uh, protector god, while Sargon, he was like a follower of the goddess Ashtar or Ainana. So it's the same, uh, it's the same god, Ashtar or Ainana, it's the same, uh, same god. So Sargon, he pulled the king, Lugal Zagi, after he defeated him in a battle, to the temple of Enlil, got him there and he had him killed. And uh, Sargon, he established the first kingdom. He was very strong, diplomatic, and very, uh, let's say tough was his enemy. So everybody were afraid from him. His expansion of the city, of the, the kingdom, covered the whole of the natural Syria, starting from what is Ilam, mountains of uh, Zagros, till Toros, and beyond uh, Toros, uh, Antokia, and all this uh, region, down to Egypt. And some uh, says that his forces reached India, but they did not reach India as you know, uh, occupying forces. He was expanding the trade routes and he was sending his like forces to tell the king that we represent this king, this territory is on his protection and we are here to represent him. Please use our route. So that's how the Akkadian kingdom was established completely under the Sargon the, of Akkad and his name become 
Sargon in the war, Sar, we still have it in the Russian language as Tsar, which means the king, and the, the, the Gon, which means like the, the ruler. So it's the, the ruler king. Uh, he did not announce uh, himself as, as God. Uh, if we want to compare the gods or the, the, the rulers in, uh, in Syria, they were always under the gods. They said that they are ruling by the power of the gods or by the instruction of the gods, while the kings in Egypt, they, like they said that they are the gods. So this is the one of the main differences between the, the ruling, uh, the kings in uh, Mesopotamia. I don't like the, the word Mesopotamia because that only makes the, the territory very small because uh, the, the natural Syria, not only Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia means that between the two rivers, the Tigris and uh, Ifrat, but Syria was much more. And including Phoenicia, uh, that's the, the Mediterranean uh, people, the one who lived on the seaside. Uh, in fact, as we proved in our previous uh, lecture, the Mediterranean itself was like a Syrian lake because all the cities, all the cities on the old cities, of course, on the Mediterranean was like Syrian uh, cities. Uh, of course, the, the, the scholars, they used to call them Phoenix as if they are different nation, but as also we proved like this is the same nation, one people, one nation, but only the ruling family and the ruling city are different. So they used to give them names, Akkadian, uh, Amoriti, Babylonian, same, but all the same because the whole territory is, uh, is one. A lot of, of uh, Sargon's uh, work uh, is being uh, recorded and found, uh, of course, as all the old uh, kings, a lot of mythological uh, like uh, stuff connected to his name. Uh, and here I'm only like scratching the, the, the surface and I believe soon we will have uh, more uh, information about the other kings. So I'm just going uh, fast. So Sargon is the ruler and his name is on the king list. So you imagine the Sumerian or the Sumerian, they created like a king, a list of the kings of the Sumerian, but they put Sargon because he's considered one of them as well. Uh, he, he was born and raised into that place. So after uh, Sargon passed away, the grandson, we will not talk about his son because we don't have much time. We are trying to cover uh, more the, the period. The grandson of Sargon, his name is Naram Sin. Naram Sin is the only king who stamped his name as God of Akkad. Akkad or Agada, that's the, uh, the name. And uh, Naram Sin, uh, we, have, we have this uh, picture here. He's uh, still uh, like uh, defeating the uh, Lulu, uh, Lulu Bali, uh, one of the nations or the tribes in the Zagrots uh, mountain. And we see him like walking over the dead bodies of his enemy. And we have his, uh, the helmet with the two horns and the horns was the only symbol of gods. All the other human kings, we do not have horns on their helmets. Only Naram Sin, he used the horns on his helmets to see that, to, to express himself as God. And uh, of course, there is a tale, uh, the, the scholars, they call it the curse of Agadi. Uh, the tale uh, says that uh, 
Naram Sin, he like approached the gods, they, 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 they did not reply to him. So he was offended and he went to destroy the temple. Then the gods decided like, we need to wipe him out. We will talk about his uh, curse or the tale of uh, Naram Sin into our next uh, lecture. The, the issue here that we know that this story is not what it is about Naram Sin because Naram Sin, he ruled until the death of his own death. I mean, he ruled until the end of his life. He was not overthrown. So there are a lot of, let's say, uh, wrong uh, telling about the, uh, the, the, the kings and the story. He is the one really who took over completely over Ilam, which is in Iran, uh, to the west of, of, of Iran, of course. And uh, he expanded the, the territory or the Akkadian uh, territory up to Egypt. He established the, the, the trading uh, point, the trading routes uh, with them. And as we mentioned, the, the, the trading post is in the old language, it means a Krim. So he established too many Krims uh, in, uh, in the pound. He ruled for 36 uh, years. And uh, when, when he died, of course, the, the kingdom start to fall down because his son, uh, Shar Kali Shari, that's uh, his name. Uh, he was not up to the to the standard. So some of the small cities under the, the whole kingdom, they start revolting and he couldn't hold. So the people, they say, oh yeah, you see, that's the curse of, you know, Agad. That's the curse of the King Naram Sin. It's reaching his family, his sons, his grandsons, uh, because he did not uh, satisfy the gods and the gods were not happy with him. Uh, we will come to, to that uh, story, but the, the wars against uh, the Akkadian uh, empire start taking a place and city by city, the, the, the power slipped out of the Sargonian uh, dynasty into another uh, dynasty. Uh, we will jump we will have a huge jump uh, now between Naram Sin and Hammurabi. So we are talking about like 600 years to 800 years uh, gap between them. Many, many happened, but until Harab Hammurabi uh, came to the uh, power and Hammurabi, uh, he's, he said that he is one of the Amoriti uh, and the scholar, they like to say, oh, that's a different nation. Well, no, it's not, it's a tribe. Uh, he become to the power and uh, he was also uh, strong, very uh, crucial to his uh, enemy, but he was very fair uh, king. And uh, we know about the codex of uh, Hammurabi. And this is the first written uh, law uh, in history. And uh, it is, it was in every city, they had this codex, every big city, of course, where they have courts and stuff like that. So a copy of that codex was there. And that's why we, 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 we found. And uh, at, the, at the top of the steel of the, the, the monuments, we see Hammurabi standing in front of the god Shamash, son, and getting the law or getting the codex from the Lord, from the god Shamash. Uh, the law of Hammurabi, many people, they believe that it is not his creation. It was kind of the assemble of some of the laws was like uh, among the, the people living into that uh, period, uh, but he's the first king who put all the laws 
So nobody can uh, bypass the law, the law or uh, take his own decision. Uh, so it was like standardized ruling all over the kingdom. The most famous uh, point or item of this law is eye for an eye, ear for an ear. But in the codex, it was like, if a free man destroy or take out the eye of another free man, then the free man can take the eye of the free man or accept. Uh, if the free man take an eye of a slave, then the, 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 the other free man will take money in front of the slave. You know, it was everything uh, very precise. Like if anyone point a finger at a sister of God or the wife of, or of anyone and cannot prove it, this man shall will be taken before the judge and his bro will be marked. What we mean bro is we marked, they will be cutting his bro, cutting it so they will not uh, raise again so he cannot hide. So it means that it will be a mark on his face forever. Like this guy, he pointed a finger to a lady. He said, oh, she is this and that. Oh no, he is this and that. Uh, also one of the, his uh, law, uh, if a man like give like a false witness in a trial and it was not established in a statement, his punishment is the death. That's it. If a builder build a house for someone and does not construct it properly and the house fall down and killed its owner, then the builder should be put to death. So he put very strict uh, laws governing every, every in fact, the, the, the codex of Hammurabi is too long. It's too long and maybe we, can make another uh, like lecture only to talk about the, the codex of, uh, of uh, Hammurabi. Of course, during his uh, rule, uh, four areas, like four, we wouldn't say four kingdoms, but four main, main uh, regions uh, were like identified. Uh, the the Mari, the, the kingdom of Mari, which is in Syria, and the place was very, very badly looted. Uh, was like big, big, big city. Then we have the the kingdom of Ebla and the king, the kingdom of uh, Katna, uh, beside the place where uh, Hammurabi rules from uh, Babylon. Uh, and Hammurabi was considered as the first Babylonian dynasty from the Amorite uh, tribe. Uh, we move. We jump another big jump <laughs> from 1800 BC to 800 BC. So we are jumping 1000 years uh, because after uh, Hammurabi, there are a, a, a lot uh, re remained like the same, not too much. It was only like a trading, minor uh, like attacks. So everybody were happy. Uh, where, where they are with some attempts to just to take over small uh, cities. Yes, some of the big wars happens uh, or like big attacks, but still we reach a very famous uh, queen. Uh, her name is not on the list of kings. Uh, her Greek name is Samiramis. And uh, you know that the Greeks, they used to add the letter S at almost all the ends of, of the names. So we have like Boulos, Boutros, uh, Philippos, many of the names, so it's Samiramis. Her, like a Syrian name is Shamuramat. Shamuramat, she was the wife of one of the very strong uh, Assyrian kings when the Assyria established. The, the, the kingdom and they moved the capital from Babylon to Ninawa. Uh, so the king was ruling out of uh, Ninawa. 
her husband was uh, Shamshi Adad. So uh, the, 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 the fifth uh, who ruled from like 400, uh, 824 BC. After the king Shamshi Hadad died, her son was not in age to run the son called Adad Nirari the third. So she run the kingdom. She uh, stabilized and strengthened the empire because before before uh, like uh, her husband comes to ruling there were a lot of wars small wars small attacks S city try to uh, like make a revolt try to stand on their own and they were always trying to uh, settle all this the Egyptians they get into the eastern part of uh, western part of Syria, the east of Egypt, they tried to expand their, 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 their existence. So some small cities were here and there. So she kept everything under control and she become like a mythical figure. Her biggest achievement was the construction of a tunnel under the river Ifrat. It was like sealed tunnel uh, by, 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 the, by the rocks. And she had an, an obelisk, an, an obelisk uh, in her name, and into that steel is it's like uh, it's it's mentioned like like this. I'm I'm gonna read what's written on that uh, steel. It said, steel of Shamu, Shamuramat, the queen of Shamshi Adad, king of the universe how they used to call themselves. I'm the king of the whole territory because from the mountains to the mountains, this is the border of the earth. The, that said the universe from the king. So, so if they rule the whole territory, so they used to call themselves the, the king of the four uh, like uh, direction or the king of the universe. So Shamuramat, the queen of Shamshi Hadad, king of the universe, king of Assyria, mother of Adad Nirari, king of the universe, King of Assyria, daughter-in-law of Shalman Nasser, king of the four regions of the world. So we see here the, the, the difference they used because Shalman Nasser, we did not talk about him really. I mean, I, I wanted to add something about him. He, after he took over the, the place and he like controlled major part of the Akkadian uh, empire, but he did not control everything. Some part they were still uh, like not under his control. That's why he was called like the king of four regions of the world. But when her husband, Shamshi Hadad, he expanded the kingdom until the natural borders, he was the king of the universe. So that's why. And here we see again, like the people did not refuse to be led by a woman. Of course, not the, the, the picture uh, was the, the, the people after that, they're trying to, yes, it was not uh, commonly uh, available or commonly used like to, to, to lead by a woman, but still there were no real revolting or rebellions against being ruled by a woman. After uh, Samiramis, like in, in, in 100 years, we have a great king, the King Sanharib. Sanharib, his name is San Ahi Eriba. And that's how it's written in uh, the, the old, uh, the cuneiforms. Uh, he was the son of Sargon II. And he's one of the most like famous uh, Assyrian kings because he was mentioned heavily into the Old Testament, especially because of the destruction of the city Babylon. Why he destroyed the city Babylon? Though it was one of the main cities, very respectable city. The reason why like uh, he had a son uh, Ashur Nadin Shumi, that's how his son called. And he was sent to, to the east. 
and the people of Ilam and Babylon, as I said, they were always like revolting and making some rebels attacks. They captured his son, Ashur Nadin Shumi, and killed him. So when the king said Harib knew that his son, the first son, he was the higher, he was like the, 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 the prince who was supposed to be the king, that he was captured by like alliance of the Babylonians and Elamid. He marched, sub, subdued the, the Elams and came back and destroyed the city of Babylon completely. He destroyed in, in uh, 689 years BC. Then he marched to the, to the west toward uh, what's today's Palestine in Israel. And he was taking the cities who were like, who revolted uh, or like start believing in another God, stop paying the taxes. And uh, he reached the city of Jerusalem. In the Bible, it said that like he did not win because the angel of God you know, intervened and destroyed the army of St. Harib. And the army was like uh, defeated and went back. But the findings on the ground, even the enemies of the Assyrian, none of them mentioned the defeat at Jerusalem. In fact, in, in the picture here, we have uh, the, the, like the, 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 the Jewish uh, people or the inhabitant of the Yehuda and uh, this one were taken as you know, uh, prisoners and they were like on their kneel praying for the king and the special drawings. I mean, uh, I don't know if, if you want, I can enlarge this one, the, the picture a uh, little bit. They had different like uh, hairstyle and beard because all the Assyrian kings, they had this long beard, the, the straight hair, I mean, curled straight hair, while, while the, 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 the people of Jerusalem, they had the, the curved hair, short curved hair and short beards. So they showing them as taken as uh, in front of the king as a slave. So again, here we have this contradiction between the biblical uh, narratives and stories and the facts uh, on the ground. So when uh, Saint Harib uh, died, His son, Esar Hadun, come to the power. And Esar Hadun, his name is Asur Aha Aydin. But you say, oh, Asar Hadun. Uh, Asar Hadun, he was the youngest brother. So he was not the, the higher. He was not the, the next, uh, like, in, in, in power. Uh, and after the death of the first son, Ashur Nadin Shumi, Saint Harib did not like announce like second who will be the ruling person for three years. And he had like 12 sons. Now we had only 11. And there were each one of them he was like, oh, I will be the king, I will be the king, I will be king. But then when Asar had, uh, when Saint Harib announced Asar Hadun as his next, the eldest two brothers, they said, oh no, we're gonna kill him. So his mother took him outside the city. Then he gathered an army and he came back and defeated his brother and he took over uh, Ninawa. And he's also very famous uh, in, the, in the Bible, in the, uh, the two kings and Isaiah and, and Ezra, because he started to rebuild Babylon after the, the, uh, you know, his father uh, destroyed uh, the city. 
And why he was not accepted by his brothers? Because his mother was not the queen. His mother was just an concubine, like a lover of the king, uh, Sanharib. And she gave a birth to the son, but Asar Haddun, and Asar Haddun was very, very uh, crucial with, with his enemies. He never let, uh, even he killed his own brothers. They, they ran away, but he, he followed him and he catch him and he expanded uh, his kingdom up to certain uh, level. And many of his war was against Egypt in, in the territory what today is like uh, Palestine and, and Israel. So he expanded the territory. He was mentioned into the, uh, the, the Bible and there is a writings about uh, him like I was my elders brothers, I was the youngest among them, the gods. And here we have this very clear issue, the God Ashur, Shamash, Baal and Nabu choose me the selection of me was approved by Ashur, Shamash, Baal, Nabu, and Ashtar. And here we see that those kings, they were, they believed in different gods. So it was not like, oh, you believed in only in my God. No. In every city, they had many temples, there were many gods. You can believe in any God you want. But only there, there always was one like ruling God who was the main protectors, and the other ones, they were only like enjoying uh this one and i believe we are getting short in time so i will go fast the son of uh, asar haddun was ashur bani baal and thanks to ashur bani baal we have the knowledge because after his father asar haddun died ashur bani baal he was very tough with his enemies. In fact, when Elam again revolted against him, he went there and he slaughtered all the people and he left the city to, to the air. And he did the same with the Egyptians. He defeated the, the Pharaoh, uh, I, uh, but among his own people, he was very fair, very lovely person, but with his enemies, he was very tough. And I believe we have to, to make one separate like presentation for all his achievements because his main work was the establishment of the central library at Nineveh, where he gathered uh, 30,000 clay tables including all the knowledge of the ancient world. And when the city fall in the hands of the uh, Parsian, they just knock down the library. So all the tablets, the, the clay tablets were under the gravels until its discovery in 1770, I believe, end of the 19th century. And thus we came to knowledge of the old uh, myth and, and, and history because they were recording all the relations, all the contracts, all the agreements. I mean, the, the library was divided into separate uh, sections. And uh, the, how we came to the Enoma Elish and the uh, Epic of uh, Gilgamesh, the, 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 the flood and many other stories which become like part of the, of the Bible. Both kings, Sanharib and Esar Haddun, they had one wise man next to them, like the wazir. His name was Ahikar. Ahikar, the name is translated as my respected brother. Ahikar, he was wise man the assistant of both and Harib and Asar Hadun. Uh, there is a tale about him that he was sent 
to, to Egypt for the negotiations. And then uh, the, the king of Egypt, he asked him to build a high building. So he, he got uh, two uh, eagles and put the slaves on the eagles and let the eagles fly. And the, 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 the slaves were crying. And, and he told the, the, the pharaoh, like, OK, you see how they are crying? That's how you will be if you build such a high building. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tale about uh, him. Uh, and Ahikar, he did not have a, a kid of his own. So he, could, he took his nephew, Nadab, and he raised him as his successor, and he was teaching him. And a lot of, of his teachings become like a phrases into the Bible, the book of the Proverbs, uh, and the wisdom of uh, Siraj. They were taken from the teaching of uh, Ahikar. And we will take very short, uh, like, uh, words. One very, 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 very famous, like, uh, do not louden the voice as when you speak or laughing. For where a house to be built by volume of sound, the ass would end a palace every day. This phrase become the same exactly in the Quran. The Quran took this phrase and included there. So it's like, uh, do not raise the voice while speaking or laughing because if uh, by the high volume you could be, you could build a house, the ass and the, uh, the, the animal, I mean, because he considered as in a very high uh, voice could build a palace every day. Oh, my son, so all the, the teaching like has this word, oh my son, he's talking to his nephew. Four things without stability. A king without army, a wazir in difficulty for lack of raid or advice, among the good people, villainy, and over the liges, tyranny. Five things, five things may not be hidden. The wit, the sage, fool, rich and the poor. So this is some of the teaching or the, the, the wisdom of Ahikar. Uh, rather pour out the wine upon the tombs of the pious than drain it with those who give offense. Uh, like carrying a stones with a wise man is better than drinking a wine with a, with a fully man. So this was some of his wisdom, it's, it's very long. It's very, very, very long. I only choose some of them. And we're gonna be moving a little bit faster because we are getting like short of time and we still have a lot to do. King Hzail, the king of Damascus, around the same period, 800 uh, BC, he was the Aramean king of Damascus. And his uh, story is fixed in the, the, the Kings two in the Bible. Uh, he ruled for many years and he captured all Israel, absolutely all this was under his control. And uh, he was ruling the whole territory until uh, the, the king uh, Shalman Nasser uh, took over uh, his territory, except Damascus. The city of Damascus was not uh, conquered until the, 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 the son of Shalman Nasser, uh, you know, Sanharib took over the, the place. Uh, and it's still, and we have a still of, uh, we call the still of Zakur. Uh, it, it talks about uh, the king. Uh, the name uh, Hazael is not Hezqiyal, who is in, in, in the old Bible. No, it's Hazael, Hazi, in the Aramic, uh, Assyrian Aramic language, means look or see. Il, it means the God Il has seen me. So that's the, the, the main, so I'm, I'm jumping over this one very fast because we are very short of time. We reach a very famous, maybe the most famous king in the history, the King Nabuchodonosor. His name was not, not Nabuchodonosor. His name was Nabu Kudri Ushur. But the people you say, oh, Nabuchodonosor, Nabuchodonosor. Uh, the story of Nabuchodonosor, his father, Nabu Plasar, was like the ruler of Babylon during Ashur Banibal. 
And uh, when Ashur Banibal sent two of his own people to rule the city, Nabuplasar refused to give them the power and he sent them back and he crowned himself as a king. And the people of Babylon, they supported him. And that led for 10 years war between Babylon and Nineveh until Nabuchodonosor came to the power. He made an agreement with the Medes. He made it like a coalition with the Medes and he marched against Nineveh. So the, the Assyrian after the death of uh, Ashur uh, Banibal, uh, they were like weakened. Uh, they asked for assistance or help from the Egyptians. So the, the Pharaoh uh, Nico II, he sent an army to help the, the Assyrians, uh, but Nebuchadnezzar, he defeated them both, the Assyrian army and the Egyptian army, and he expanded his territory completely over the, all the same Akkadian uh, empire, the territory of, of, of Syria. Of course, he was very, very well known into the uh, the old history, uh, he I mean to to, to enforce his uh, marriage or his uh, relation with the Medians, he got married to like a Median uh, uh, lady of the, of the daughter of granddaughter of the of the king, and he prayed uh, to Marduk uh, like please protect my family and my people, and this I'm moving fast. He was very famous for building the, uh, the Hanging Gardens, one of the seven wonders of the world. And these uh, gardens were described uh, in details by uh, Diodorus uh, Siculus, the historian, uh, 90 years or like 50 BC. So those gardens, they were still existed, but many of the scholars, they believe that uh, Diodorus, he mixed Babylon and uh, uh, Nineveh. Uh, up to date, we did not find any uh, the, like the final location of the uh, hanging uh, gardens. Uh, this picture is how the uh, they believe the garden looked like, uh, but it's, it's not found. Uh, we don't have uh, any existence. We move a little bit to the west. As I mentioned before, uh, the Mediterranean Sea was like a Syrian uh, lake. The one of the main cities was Carthage, when what is today uh, Tunis, and uh, the name Carthage it means the the, the, the new city, Carthage, Carthage, uh, become the, the city Carthage, and from that city the one of the main uh, figures was uh, Hannibal, uh, Hani Baal, it means the, uh, the the good life by the Lord Baal, Some, something like that. And Hannibal, he's considered as the father of the strategy. Uh, he was very famous during the the, the, the Ponic uh, Wars, and the the Ponic Wars. Many people they don't know that the word Ponic it means the Phoenician War, because the the word Phoenician was like shortened in the Ponic. So Hannibal is the one who defeated Rome. He went to, to Europe and uh, many of his uh, tactics uh, still up to today into the uh, military uh, college and universities teachings. Uh, Hannibal, uh, I, I, I will move fast because I wanted to talk more about Hannibal, but there are some more uh, like uh, people I want to, to mention. Uh, very famous person, he's uh, Meligar of Gadra. Uh, Meligar of Gadra, uh, he was a poet, very famous. He's the one who established the, uh, the anthology. Uh, his work, uh, the Garland, uh, where he gathered all the small uh, poems, small poems, like four to ten sentences as, as a poem. He was born uh, in a city, uh, Gadara, which is very north of uh, Jordan today, south of uh, Syria on, at the border. 
uh, and he lived around uh, 70 years. Uh, one famous uh, say about him, please do not mix him with the uh, Milligar, uh, the, uh, the hero, because there is like a, a Greek or a Roman Greek or Greek uh, hero, the Milligar, his different one, this is a poet. Uh, one of his like uh, poems, it says, love, it's talking to someone, my love. If you burn too often my scorched soul, she will fly away. She too, Kirol boy, has wings. And the most famous uh, poem of his uh, is what's in, on his uh, grave. It reads like the uh, stranger passing this way, slow down. Don't be afraid to pass among the dead. Here lies a peaceful old man, his last resting place. It's Milagaros, son of Erectus, who sang with love. Make happy tears rain from the eyeballs because he stood intermediate between the goddess of poem and embodiment of charming beauty, who has fused between the sweetness of love and the salt of tears between the demons of inspiration and unburdened prayers. He was a man of tear, blessed by the gods, but the city of Gadra was his, made him a man. If you are a Syrian passer, you are, if you are a Syrian passenger, say at my grave peace, Salam. If you are a Phoenician, say Adoni, which is a sin for Salam. If you are a Greek, say Chariati. But before you leave this place, respond to my greeting. So, uh, and there are a lot of books about uh, him, his uh, poems. And I believe I will make one special, uh, like love, <laughs> poem for love uh, about the uh, Melgaros of uh, Gadara. <laughs> one famous person of Syria was called the Apollodor of Damascus. He believed is the engineer who built uh, Rome or many of the main uh, landmarks of Rome. Uh, and with his name, it's very obvious uh, mystifications because they say, oh, he was a Syrian Greek engineer. Just a, so he was like a Syrian Greek engineer. Uh, he lived in the second century AD. Uh, Apollodor was the, uh, the, the Emperor uh, Trajan's fa favorite uh, architect. He built for him the, the markets, the forum, the temples, the columns of Trajan's, which is the first of his kind. Of its kind. He built the bridge over uh, the river. Uh, so Apollodor of Damascus, when the kings or the, the emperors, they wanted to build something in, in Rome. They did not use the Romans, did not use the Greek. They approached the Damascus engineer and uh, with Apollodor, 200 of the, they call them the skilled workers, they moved to Rome to start build. In fact, by the way, the word Rome is the, the Assyrian, the, the Aramic word of high, on, on the height. So Rome is the, the city who built on the seven like uh, hills so that's the meaning of the word Rome. No, no, no one Roman Italian person will give you meaning because the city was built by the Syrians. Another person, Septimus Severus. Septimus Severus is one of the most famous uh, like uh, Roman, <laughs> as they like to say it, but in fact, he's a Syrian. He was born in what today is Libya, in one of the Phoenician uh, settlements, <clears throat> the city of Lepis Magna. Uh, he took the power in uh, 193. He ruled over Rome as, as uh, emperor. The story of his uh, becoming the, the emperor, when the emperor uh, Commodus, uh, was like assassinated uh, last day of uh, 93. Uh, his successor was the Emperor uh, Pertinax. Uh, but when Pertinax was, he was an old man, very older, elderly person, the uh, Praetorians guards, the special guards of Rome, they took the, the power 
they did not like what uh, Pertnax uh, was trying to stop their influence, the, the new discipline he was uh, like putting into the, uh, the cities. So they had him assassinated. And those uh, Praetorian uh, guards, they were selling their loyalty. So whoever pays him more, he would be appointed the, uh, the emperor. And one famous uh, rich man, rich senator, uh, Didios uh, Julianos, he made the maximum payments, but he was not like a military man. He did not have you know, this discipline. He was just a senator. So when he was appointed as uh, emperor, three candidates, three governors, they challenged him. The first was uh, Claudius Albinos, the governor of uh, Britain, the, uh, the, the Niger, the governor of Syria. And of course, the third one is Septimus Severus, who was the governor of uh, Pannonia. Pannonia is like uh, France and part of, of Italy on that area. And it was the closest to, to Rome. So when they knew that the emperor was um, appointed as uh, Julianus, uh, Severus, he went to uh, Claudius Albinus and he said, listen, I do not agree with what happened. We should be the leader because we are the governors. We have the power. He agreed with him. He said, I'm going to march against uh, Rome. I will give you the land, your land. You will be the, the, the king. So he agreed with him and he marched against Rome. When he took Rome, the Niger, who was governor of Syria, he knew that Severus had taken over Ro Rome and appointed himself as, as a king. So he marched against him. So Septimus, he walked against Niger in Syria and he took over the, the place. Uh, and he, he came back when Albinus knew that Severus like double crossed him. He tried to attack him, but during that period, Severus, he had a lot of power, a huge army, and he defeated uh, Albinos, and he was named as you know, Augusta, was the, the first, the strongest uh, one. And when he settled everything in his uh, kingdom, he went to his uh, city, uh, uh, Lipix uh, Magna, and start the real construction of the city. And this construction still exists up to today. Septimus Severus, his first wife, was also like Punic, Phoenician, like him. When she died, he married another like uh, imp empress, <laughs> another lady from Syria, Julia Dumna. Julia Dumna, when you look about the name, they say, oh, it's a Roman empress, okay? But she was born in Emissa, which is today Hummus, and her father, I mean, she was born in Emissa to an Arab family, a, a famous priest of the deity Elagabulus, the god of Santa. So they say, oh, she's a Roman. She was born in Syria for an, an Arab uh, family, you know, who was, you know, God, who was the priest of the, the god. I mean, they're trying to hide the, the, the Syrian uh, roots of uh, this uh, queen. Uh, and you see, even Septimus Severus, he was ruling over like what today is France. He did not took a wife for himself from that region. He was trying to keep his blood clean. So the first wife was a Phoenician. The second wife was from Emisa from Syria, because for him, this is one nation, one, one place, the same relatives. They did not change, did not change the blood. Julia Dumna gave a birth to two sons, Caracalla and Geta, who became both of them emperors. In fact, Septimus Severus, because of the problems he had uh, after the, you know, the, uh, the, the emperor was, you know, taking over and the problems he had himself, he wanted his kids not to have the same problems 
So he divided the kingdom, the ruling power between them, between Caracalla and Gita. Uh, and uh, Caracalla, unfortunately, he was not happy with uh, the shared like uh, ruling with Geta. So he killed his brother, Geta. And when the, the news came to uh, Julia Dumna that her son, Caracalla, killed her other son, Geta, she committed a suicide. And she was uh, buried in what today is uh, Turkey, near uh, Antakya, Antich uh, Antakya, Antakya, Antichos. Uh, it's occupied uh, part of, of Syria by the by the Turks. So, uh, Julia Dumna, the second uh, wife of Septimus uh, Severus, during the ruling of Septimus Severus and Caracalla and Geta, they were one very famous man. And I don't know if, do, do we have any lawyer with us here today? If you have a lawyer, if we have a lawyer here, welcome your father, in law, yes, okay. Meet your father in law. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I saw Papinian. Papinian or Bavinian is the, the father, the, the godfather of all the lawyers. I, 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 I thought that the presentation has stopped and the recording has finished, so that's why I, okay. So, the King Septimus Severus, he had this assistant, Papinian, who was born also in Emissa, Homus. And uh, it's uh, believed that he is like a relative to uh, Julia Dumna. Uh, and he is called the, the, the father of law. In fact, his uh, status is still When you get uh, into the uh, Palace of Justice in Rome, his status is there. Uh, okay. So uh, and into the uh, the House of Repres Representative in the United States, we have like a sign. A lot of his books were lost a lot, but his works is the base of all the law because everybody knows that oh, we are using the Roman laws. We are following the Roman uh, laws. So those books, they were written by Papinian, 37 books, the questionnaires and 19 books, the answers, two books, definitions and uh, adulteries. In fact, the smallest one is the, called the, the city administration, which was the manual on the duties of the commissioners of streets and bridges. So Paminian is the Asylum of Rights and Treasury of the Law. And many people, they say that they were no one and there will never be uh, an equal uh, to him. This is another like a uh, Syrian uh, person who influenced, he made like a sign on, on the world, but we don't, many people, they don't know, I believe today might be like a shocking news uh, for you. We have another king, the Marcos uh, Philippus, or he's called the Philip the Arab. 
Uh, he was born in city uh, south of uh, Syria, city of Shahba, uh, near Dar'a, on the border with uh, Jordani. And uh, I will not talk take much, but those uh, mosaics from his palace and those pictures made by me. Uh, and the guard, he came say, "Oh, you're." You are not taking pictures. It's not allowed. I say, well, listen, I drove like 3,000 kilometers to reach here. You don't tell me not to take pictures. I'm going to take some pictures. And this is some of the other like mosaic. And here you can see my family. So you can see the real size of those uh, mosaic and all this from his palace. His palace does exist still now. So it was very wonderful uh, place. He got the power. Uh, over, of course, uh, he was appointed as uh, emperor and stuff like that, but I will not uh, get into this one. I want to move to this very famous uh, lady, the Queen Zenobia. The Queen Zenobia was, or as she's called in uh, our language, is Bid Zabai, the daughter of Zabai. And we have her picture reflected on our uh, currency, the 500 bills. Uh, she was the queen of uh, Palmyra and she expanded her kingdom uh, in the year 267 to 272. Uh, after her husband died, she took the power and she challenged uh, Rome. And when the Romans, they sent army to defeat her or to have a war with her, she defeated them all. And she refused to acknowledge the, the, the Roman. Now she, she used to say, oh, I acknowledge you as a king, I acknowledge you. But then she decided that she does not want to acknowledge them. And she printed her own currency, reflecting her face on those currency, which led that the, the people wanted to, the, the Romans wanted to get rid of her. And in fact, the, the king, was fighting her, the, uh, they used to say, oh, you are fighting a woman. And he said, no, no, I'm fighting Zenobia, not a woman. <laughs> you know, she was, you know, like very, very strong. She enlarged her, her, her kingdom. And uh, finally she was defeated when all the Roman uh, armies gathered together, all of them, and they marched against her. Uh, when she was defeated in the battle, she runs away toward the, the east, but she was captured. Uh, some stories, they said that the, the king uh, marched her in the cities, uh, the, the, the king uh, Orleus. He paraded her into a cage in, into, during his uh, triumph uh, parade in Rome. And uh, some, they said that she got married to like a Roman uh, Senate and she stayed his life, uh, the rest of her life with him. Uh, some of the stories she said that, that she took uh, the, the poison. Yes, she was captured, but she was never paraded in because she was too proud to be uh, like captured and paraded in, in, into the uh, the, 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 the triumph, the, the parade, the, the, the triumph parade in, in Rome. So the Queen uh, Zenobia, uh, Bidzabai, and that's how her name is written into the Palmyrian uh, language, and it, it reads Bit Zabai, so the daughter of Zabai. Uh, she deserves a lot more, uh, like uh, attention, <laughs> but we are very short of time, so I will jump. I will jump to another queen, the Queen Mawia, or they call her the, the warrior queen or the warrior queen of Tanuk. She rebelled uh, against the, the Roman uh, emperor in the year 375. For like 50 years, she was ruling the, the Tanuki. And Tanuki, or uh, they call them the uh, Ambat, also another name of the, the group, it's the tribe, a tribe who lived in the uh, south of Syria, uh, between Syria and Jordani. And in fact, their most famous uh, place was the city of Al-Batra, Al-Batra. And the name Al-Batra, it comes from the Patra, which is the rock. So Al-Batra, 
It means the, the rocky place was built inside the mountains. And in fact, to, to get inside the city, there is very narrow route, route inside the mountain and you know, where one man can stand against a whole army. Uh, the story also when her husband died, she took over, the, her husband was the last uh, king of the Tanukh al-Hawari. Uh, and why this problem happened between her and the Romans, the Romans wanted to appoint like, uh, uh, like uh, a patriarch, uh, a bishop over the area, but they refused the bishop and they said, no, we want our own bishop. We don't want the Roman bishop, we want our bishop. So the Romans, they said, no, you have to use the bishop. The bishop we choose will be your leading bishop. So they refused that. And that led to a long war between them. And in fact, the Romans, they couldn't defeat her because they, under the, uh, the ruling of uh, the Queen Mawiya, they used like the, uh, the guerrilla, the, the rebel uh, tactics, small group of, uh, of knights and they were attacking uh, special like weak points because they, they are from the region, they know exactly the region, they were attacking the place, running away. So the Romans, they had to agree with her. They gave her the, uh, the bishop, they, they allocate, in fact, the bishop they, they, they choose is one of the bishops who signs on the, the, the Nikia uh, agreement, the first agreement about inside the, uh, the church. Here we have some writings. Uh, what in, into the uh, the Nabatian uh, language? Uh, it's here. Uh, here the the grave of uh, this person, the king of the uh, the Tanuk. Uh, the writings little bit differ from the previous one, the cuneiform, because the writings has been changed in into one of the next uh, lectures, not the next one, the one after. In March, we're going to be talking about how those uh, languages uh, different in the writings uh, change. And because we touch the, uh, the religion uh, subject and the bishop, we cannot uh, pass Saint Ephraim, who is the, the most, the doctor of the church. Uh, in fact, his writings, uh, they say that he wrote like 3 million uh, hymns uh, he was based in the city in Saibin, which is now in, uh, in Turkey. And uh, he was sent a uh, monk, some of his uh, writings. In fact, the, uh, the ritual uh, inside the church uh, was written uh, by him. And uh, his uh, student, uh, Jacob, uh, he's the one who signed on the, uh, the, the Nikas in 325. Uh, one of his like hymns, O Lord and Master of my life, grant me not a spirit of sloth, meddling, love of power in idle talk, but give me your servant, a spirit of sober mindness, humility, patience, and love. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own faults and not to judge my brother since you are blessed to the ages of ages. Amen. So this is uh, one of the small, I believe for Saint Ephraim, we will be doing a separate uh, because all of, he, he wrote 3 million hymns. I mean, <laughs> it's like the whole encyclopedia. And that's it. And uh, as the last uh, time we did, that's what they said about Syria. Alexander the Great, when he tried the water of Syria, he said, this water reminds me of my mother milk. Milk, Syria is my second homeland. Charles Firlo, who is a very famous uh, archeologist, he said, every civilized person should say he has two countries, his homeland and Syria. The Herodotus, the, 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 the famous uh, Greek historian, he said, the Greek were so much till the Phoenician came and brought within the writings and world Durant, he said the Greek did not establish civilization. They, they took it ready from the East and the East of Greek is Syria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
I know I, I believe I took much time than I planned to, and uh, we have some time for some questions, if any. Shoot me, shoot me. 